Since my last video on hair selection using channels, it seems quite a few folks found it helpful. So I thought it would be useful to do a follow-up video with more tips to help users get the most out of this technique. So let's get right into it. The first tip to know is when to apply the channels technique. When it comes to hair selection, there are many alternatives to choose from, which can lead to unnecessary confusion. One alternative, and also the easiest, is to use the refined brush. The main problem with this method, though, is unless the edges of the hair are very distinct from the background, this tool has a tendency to make mistakes, as you can see here. Another alternative is to use the luminosity range mask, which I've discussed recently. While this method works better than the refined brush for certain images, looking at this particular image, you can definitely deduce that this tool won't work well due to the similarity between the brightness level of the background and the hair borders. This can be confirmed by looking at the graph. As you can see here, the borders of the hair appear in the same color as the background, black, which is not what you want. Ideally, you want the hair to be white while the background in black. The third alternative is using channels. This technique is best used when there's a clear hue difference between the hair and the background. In this particular image, the hair's warm hue contrasts nicely with the sky's cool hue. So the use of channels seems like the better option. So that is our consideration why we're going to use channels for this image. So let's begin using channels. If you watch my previous video, the following steps will be familiar to you. I'll start off by duplicating the layer. Next, I'll click channels. And that brings us to the second tip. Be aware of Affinity's channel user interface quirks. Some users have pointed out to me that when navigating to channels, the background channels, which are supposed to appear at the bottom, don't show up. After checking, it seems that this issue occurs when the layer is deselected. You can see that the background channels disappear at the same time the handles are removed, indicating that the layer has been deselected. I found that to rectify this, simply navigate to the layer panel and reselect the layer. That will usually solve the problem. Moving on, the next step after navigating to channels is to select the specific channel which shows the greatest contrast between the hair and the background. In this case, it appears to be the blue channel. While the contrast in the blue channel is good, as mentioned in the previous video, it is also useful to check whether inverting the channel will give even greater contrast and make the hair even easier to distinguish. I'll right click the blue background channel I'll click Invert. As you can see, in this case, the contrast is indeed made much greater after the inversion. The peripheral hair strands really stand out. So let's use this channel. I'll right click the inverted blue channel. I'll click Create Grayscale Layer. I'll click the Reset button to prevent the background layer from being shown as grayscale. I'll navigate back to layers. As you can see, the inverted channel is now added as a layer. For more precision, I like to use Select Sampled Color to create the selection from the grayscale image. I find this method works better than using the refined brush for creating a precise selection. I'll sample a white area of the image. Unfortunately though, even as I increase the tolerance to maximum, the selection is falling short in covering all the hair strands. So how do you deal with this? That brings us to the third tip. If sampling the foreground is not doing an adequate job, sample the background instead. Let's sample the black background. As you can see, this method is far more effective in covering the hair in its entirety. I'll adjust the tolerance to ensure that the selection covers just the hair 
and not the adjacent areas. Next, with the background image selected, I'll create the mask. I'll paint on the mask to remove any remaining remnants. And there you go, the final image. Here is the result without channels, just using the refined brush. As you can see, it misses significant parts of the hair's edges. And here is the result using channels. I think you can see that it's a more precise selection and correctly includes the soft wind-blown hair, which has caused other methods to fail. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know if you have any further questions on this technique. Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.